Good afternoon, everyone. This is what our skies are going to become as the Earth tries to continue to equalize charge with a decreasing active sun. 388,000 lightning strikes. The timeline moving forward into the green section, solar cycle 25. You have to understand our sun in the center is electromagnetically connected with our Earth. It steps down, our Earth steps down. These magnetic field lines, field aligned currents, connecting back to our sun. This sun is so small in comparison, it is so out of sync of what the real size of the sun would be. We're the third planet out and we would be a pinprick in comparison to how large the sun truly is in our solar system. 60,000 lightning strikes just in the UK, massive flooding, hailstorms over France, larger hail in France, flooding in Germany, and I am going to explain what you can expect to see with plasma displays in our skies as we enter this grand solar minimum. And this video is brought to you by TrueLeafMarket.com, heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on the planet. All the links from tonight's video are below in the description box. Lightning storm is an understatement that came over the UK during the weekend described as supernatural by many in the accounts. 60,000 strikes at the minimum and what you're looking at is an atmosphere trying to equalize charge with our sun as it steps down in its 400 year grand solar minimum decreased activity state. The images are spectacular, and if you watch the videos, it is more than a strobe light. It goes on for hours and hours and hours of this same ground-to-sky lightning, horizontal lightning, sparkler lightning, and any types of descriptions of lightning that's possible to be out there. And I, I love how they just put, it's an electrical storm. And the ferocity of this has so far been unequaled or unmatched. The descriptions coming, again, are just breathtaking on how they described it. Over here on Severe Weather EU, 388,000 flashes strikes from the Mediterranean over to the UK. There was so much horizontal lightning going out in this spider filament pattern that was seen. That seemed to be the norm of the electrical discharges from the sky. Buildings struck again and again and again across the city. And everywhere you look, you got these filamentary lightning displays. And I want to try to explain it in a simplified, easy way to understand why our Earth's atmosphere is so electrically charged and why this is becoming the norm across the planet, along with these massive hail and these once in a two or three hundred year flood event that now seem to be occurring weekly. You're going to start to see more of this in our skies. And this is the pattern it's going to take. And when you start to look back at ancient petroglyphs, if this were to stay up into the sky longer, you would start to see what they were trying to represent that they saw in the skies. And what's surprising to me is how UK streets can fill this deep with water. It's still baffling how fast these floods are coming up in major metropolitan areas. And it just wasn't the UK either. If we take a look at Spain, France, and Italy, where other huge hail events occurred during the same time. And you see Southern England over there getting pounded as well electrically. But then it didn't stop there either. These massive floods in Germany, it's the third year in a row that we've seen these types of unbelievable, what's considered once in a hundred, once in a 200 year event, keep rolling again and again and again across Germany. So if you're looking for upticks or areas on the map that are gonna continue to intensify as the grand solar minimum increases its intensity, Germany is absolutely a space on the map you would need to mark along with France. Let's talk about the French hail storms. And it's not just France. You've seen this again and again over the last year, these massively deep hail from anywhere from ankle deep up to waist deep hail, which is not normal. If the media tries to convince you otherwise, you know that it's a snow job, all pun intended. And within these larger hail falls, you'll start to see larger hail as well, which means stronger updrafts that are allowing these hailstones just to get so large. 
I bring you up to this point, I really try to want to explain it to you, the timeline, and also why it's happening electrically so you can get a real good gauge and explain it to other people. And when these electrical fronts come in, you know, understand why they're happening and how ferocious they're going to get. Now, first, taking a look at the timeline. This is based on Valentina Zarkova, Shepard, Zarkov, and Popov's work. Double dynamo in the sun, talking about magnetic field canceling waves. All four fields are going out of phase this time in the sun. So the timeline stands. The wider the wave becomes, the more intense the weather becomes. Now, if we take a look, we're at 2018, approximately in the middle, right where the green starts. Solar cycle 25 really hasn't started yet. We're still at the end of solar cycle 24, years early, by the way. So taking a look timeline out into the next 40 years of cooling that will pervade our planet, here we go. So as we step down in electrical activity from the sun, our Earth is going to match that. Now that's just coming in our local neighborhood here, but we also need to think further out in the heliosphere when the solar wind is actually creating different effects that are allowing more galactic cosmic rays into our own solar system and then the sun itself with its cosmic rays everything is decreasing in activity state so the electrical charge needs to equalize electric universe explains this clearly as the model the way the universe works and operates center in the sun those loops coming out those are magnetic field lines more dense north south pole red lines coming in those are the field aligned currents now notice how electrically and electromagnetically our earth also is right in that torus wave coming off of the sun's magnetic field lines this is what drives our magnetosphere on our planet that gives us the poles that makes your compass work that's the reason we have magnetism on our earth is because of what you see in this representation here Now, this same particle charge is what gives us the aurora on our poles. Do you think these magnetic field lines just disperse into space and just wander off into nothingness from our Earth? Absolutely not. They're connected back to the sun. The sun is the largest thing in our solar system. I'm going to wide that out so you can really see what I mean. Our sun is a million times larger than the Earth. A million times larger. And looking at this representation here, the sun is absolutely so small in comparison to what we really have in our solar system. If we brought it out to true scale, our Earth would be almost invisible at literally a pinprick dot lying next to the sun. When I talk about the auroras, everything is connected back to the sun electromagnetically. So when our sun is stepping down in charge, when it's going through this 400 year cycle, some say 2000 year, some say 3600 year cycle of solar activity decreasing. Our earth needs to decrease as well. It's overcharged, if you will, because the sun's decreasing its activity state on these longer multi-century cycles. So if the sun decreases in its electrical activity state, which means it decreases charge as if you were to dim a light, if you will, our Earth still has a full charge. It needs to let some of that electricity go. This is what you're seeing in the skies, and it is going to intensify and amplify through these next few years. This is why you're seeing such ferocious electrical storms and such highly charged weather fronts. Because the cloud patterns are driven by this same electromagnetic effect. These cells that you see along the equatorial bands that form the doldrums, what you see in the polar regions, it's all driven and held in place or allowed to wander because of our magnetosphere at the current time, which is weakening. So these, what you see jet streams and cloud bands and cells are absolutely going out of their normal flows. They were locked in tight when the magnetosphere was highly charged. Now it's going to a 400 year low. So you can expect our jet streams to wander, our cloud patterns to move, seasons to be mixed up. This is what's happening. They don't want to talk about it in the media because when we look at the timeline here, time is up. And I'd say that with the most humble warning that I can. And the simplest way to explain it is the wider the wave gets, the more intense our weather is going to get. 
And we're coming into an incredible ramp up in what will be effects that you'll see across the planet weather-wise. That green line pretty much splits exactly where July to the end of 2018 is. And then you can see as we continue into 2019, 2020, this weird weather you've seen in the last six months is really just a little tiny ramp up from 2017 to 2018. This is the state of our climate. This is what's driving our climate. And thanks for watching. I hope you get a better idea of why these electric skies are now pervading our planet and why the storms are getting so ferocious and so intense with a larger hail. It can be really easy explained if you understand that it is truly not CO2, that it is our sun.